the UN Convention of the Law of the Sea created a new law which was used to try and resolve the problems that were created with different countries and how they choose to use their territorial waters and what they could claim as territory. Such as uh, how in 1945, President Harry S. Truman, responding in part to pressure from domestic oil interests, unilaterally extended uni United States jurisdiction over all natural resources on that nation's con continental shelf, oil, gas, minerals, etc. This was the first major challenge to the freedom of the seas doctrine. Other nations soon followed. In the late 1940s, Argentina, Chile, Peru, and Ecuador all claimed a 200-mile zone, hoping thereby to limit the access of distant water fishing fleets and to control the de depletion of fish. After the Second World War, Egypt, Ethiopia, Saudi Arabia, Libya, Venezuela, and other Eastern European countries laid claim to a 12-mile territorial sea, thus clearly departing from the traditional 3-mile limit. All of these sea claims were in order to protect the resources that each country wanted to have, while also maintaining a good economy at the same time. A good example would be offshore oil that was the center of attraction in the North Sea. Britain, Denmark, and Germany were in conflict as to how to carve up the continental shelf within, with its rich oil reserves. With an increase in all these conflicts, in November 1967, Malta's ambassador to the UN, Arvid Pardo, asked the nations of the world to look around them and open their eyes to the conflict that could devastate the oceans. He went on to give a speech to the United Nations General Assembly and he spoke of the superpower rivalry that was spreading to the oceans, of the pollution that was poisoning the seas, and of the conflicting legal claims and their implications for a stable order, and of the rich potential that laid on the seabed. W what Pardo wanted was an effective international regime over the seabed and the ocean floor beyond a clearly defined national jurisdiction. This, of course, led to a conference that began in New York in 1973. It ended nine years later with the adoption of the Constitution in 1982. This was when it was officially the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. During those nine years, shuttling back and forth between New York and Geneva, representatives of more than 160 sovereign states sat down and discussed the issues. They bargained and traded national rights and obligations in the course of the marathon negotiations that produced the conventions. The key provisions that were discussed were setting limits, navigation, exclusive economic zone, continental shelf, deep seabed mining, the exploitation regime, technological prospects, the question of universal participation in the convention, pioneer investors, protection of the marine environment, marine scientific research, and the settlement of disputes. With all that being said and done, in 1982, the established state's rights and responsibilities concerning ownership and use of the seas and oceans and the resources were given to each country. This law defines four zones of diminishing control, territorial sea to 11 miles, over which coastal states have sovereignty, including exclusive fishing rights. Contiguous zone to 23 miles in which states can enforce customs, immigration, and sanitation laws. There's the exclusive economic zone to 230 miles in which state has the right to explore, exploit, and conserve and manage resources. The high seas, which is all remaining ocean beyond the EEZ, to which all states have equal access. Although this convention took place to resolve the problems that were created, it still created much more challenges, that mostly regarding least developed countries and how they could benefit from this new regime. They, may, they might not be able to benefit from this regime due to not being able to harmonize the national legislation with it and how to fulfill the obligations encumbered upon states under the convention. Due to these states still being developing, they will not achieve the full benefit from this new regime due to having less opportunities than higher developed countries. Although this is correct, the law of the sea still solved many of the conflicts that were being created during the late 1940s and after World War II and how the oceans were to be used.